dusty, complicated, frustrating. Now, if you fiddle around with the telescopes, these are the adjectives which are the most associated with an entry-level budget telescope. Now, some of the questions which I do get asked a lot on this channel is, how do I make this thing work? Where should I point my telescope? How do I locate a planet? How do I do a polar alignment? Especially if I'm in a Southern hemisphere. Turns out we can answer all of them in just one video. Hey Lehman Astronomers, I'm your host Vishal and I would like to thank every single one of you for helping us reach this milestone of 1000 subscribers. I'm thankful and grateful to every single one of you. Speaking of that, please stick to the end of this video for a special announcement. Now let's get kicking. First thing is first, we have to make sure our telescope is well balanced and our fiber scope is aligned with the main tube. If you're unsure of this being correct, please check out my other video on how to set up the telescope. I'll link it down in the doodly-doo. Let's start by polar alignment. You can use your phone or a magnetic compass to find north or south pole. I'm in southern hemisphere, so it's south pole where I have to move my azimuth axis to. Once it's moved, make sure you tighten the screw and take a note that this point will not and should not move during the whole observation. It is going to keep on pointing south at all times. Now Google your location's latitude and roughly put the latitude gauge to those specific readings. Technically at this point, you should get the north or south polaris in the finest scope, which will make sure that the polar alignment is precisely done. Now that's usually helpful if you're trying to take a long exposure photography, but in a low budget telescope, it's extremely difficult to do. And in, especially in Southern hemisphere, it's really, really hard to do. But the good news is just with the rough polar alignments, it can do wonders. Now it's important to know the observing time of our planets we want to see before we set up a telescope. For example, let's check out the rising time of Jupiter and Saturn. Now Jupiter is one of the brightest planet in the night sky and is a perfect candidate for the beginners as it's very easy to spot with the naked eye. Now with the Starwalk app I have, it's like an augmented reality app. You can move your phone across the sky. It tells you in real time which stars or planets you're looking at, at that specific patch of sky. If you don't have this app, just use Google to find out the rising time of Jupiter and the directions based upon your location. Then using the compass, you can find those direction and find the bright objects in that patch of sky to point the telescope and start exploring. So once you know the rising time of the planets, make sure you give them half hour or one hour so that it comes over the horizon and you have a better chance of spotting it. In our case, where my app is pointing, I can see a couple of bright stars. So let's start moving the telescope towards them. Notice, I will be only moving the right ascension and declination coordinates on the telescope. And if you want to check out more about right ascension and declination, please check out my other video. I'll link it down in the doodly do as well. Now, once you have roughly pointed towards it, now I will use the finder scope to pinpoint the object. Now this should ensure from the viewfinder, the object is visible if you've done everything so far correctly. You should expect to see some brightness or a bit zoomed in version of the bright object. Now use the focuser to achieve the optimum focus. And in the case of Jupiter, you usually start to see it along with its moons. And in the case of Saturn, well, Saturn's rings are just gorgeous to be recognized by themselves. Now the planet will be moving across the sky so quickly that it will be leaving the viewfinder. And that's where the slow motion controls come into play. Make sure you have them in hand and use them to turn it very slightly to keep the planets in the viewfinder for longer period. And note that these slow motion controls only follow the planets as we have polar aligned it in the beginning of the setup. All right, so back to the special announcement. Taking a casual glance at the night sky of what may appear to be unchanging point of light is actually history of that star. 
at that casual glance transports us to the gulf of space and time exciting things are happening at layman smart i intend to make a fortnightly educational video on astronomy and its relating content so if you've not subscribed yet to the channel please do so thanks again for watching wishing you clear skies ahead I hope I was recording everything.